Uh, so a little bit uh, about me before I actually get started. Uh, I'm Liam, I'm a front-end software engineer, and I work in this very office at Treatwell, and currently I am based within our inspiration focus team. So we look after things that inspire our customers to book with us. And I've been here for about al almost a year now, and before that I was at Marks and Spencers. Uh, yeah, so what is the chat? So the title is hashtag no context. Originally we had this title so that we could change the topic of the conversation in case you wanted to change it, but then we royally screwed that up because we added the tagline, the context behind React's context. So now we're stuck just talking about this. So hopefully it's not too bad. So I'm just gonna quickly go over what uh, the context API is out to achieve and a little bit of its history. So it's legacy API and what it has at the moment and then go over as well uh, how it works with the new world of React hooks. So what is it actually out there to achieve? Well, it allows us to access data and functionality at various steps within the React uh, component tree, and it allows us to do this in a very clean and concise way. So gone are the days of having something like this, where we set a variable and we pass it down to every single React component, creating like prop spaghetti effectively. And now we have nice clean code that looks like this, where we have a nice wrapper that implicitly defines our context and passes it down to every uh, child. So yeah, so now I'll quickly give you a little chat about the legacy API. So our first stop is with the OG and the original experimental API, which was first introduced in React version 16.3, and it's soon to disappear in React version 17.0. Uh, so how does it work? Well, in order to provide a context, we need to implement the class method getChildContext. And here we return an object that defines our context. We've got a theme here, and it has the value light. And we define a class property called childContextTypes as well, which defines what our context is called and the type that it's going to be. So this is how we define a context. And then how do we consume this context? So we have our lovely header component here that we was in a previous example. So what we do is here, we define on our class uh, a dot context types, and we specify that we're going to be using the theme context, which allow, then allows us to access this via this dot context, which is an object which contains themes, and we can use it within our component. Nice and easy. Uh, but how do we update the context? How do we allow the context to update and then propagate down to every other child within the tree? And this really depends on the type of components that you are using. And if you do follow the React docs, it will tell you to not do that. It tells you don't bother updating the context. You shouldn't be updating it. And why is that? Well, it's very important because it depends on the type of components you are using. So say we have React components here. They're all just regular components. We have a theme wrapper, which is our context provider. So that context is set by that uh, component state. So when that state updates, the context will update, which in turn will force that uh, component's child to re-render because its state is updated, which will then force that child's uh, component to re-render as well because uh, the state is updated and then the context will be passed down to each of them. However, that's nice and handy if your components are nice and regular like that. But if we have another example here, where we have image carousel again, but image carousel is a pure component. It's not a regular React component. When theme wrapper does update and the context updates, it's going to force image carousel to re-render. But image carousel is going to stop it from re-rendering. And this is because uh, should component update is going to return false because the props and the state to that component will not have updated. So that's going to result in the context being passed down, but the context will never be re-rendered. So all these components here will never update with their theme. So if you change from light to dark or something like that, they will just not update. So that's one of the problems that we face uh, with the legacy way of doing things. But yeah, so now we'll move on to the new API. So the new and current API solves the exact same problem but with a significant change to the API uh, interface, whilst also making it far easier to update uh, contexts. 
So if we take this here, providing a context is far similar, uh, similar rather, uh, simpler. So we've got react.createContext, and we set a default value of light. And then what that does is it creates an object that contains two components, and it contains the provider. So we've got theme.provider here, which is given from the theme context up top. And this accepts a value, which will be the value of our context, because light is just our default up there. And so every child within that theme provider that is composed will then have the context value. But then how do we consume that context value? So what we do is we use the second component that our theme object returns called the consumer. And that has a function as a child, which takes the theme value. And everything that is within this function of a child will then have the value of the context and every time that that context is updated, the component will re-render, resulting in all of our components being nice and updated whenever the context is updated from up top. But the only one problem with doing this is that you can't use these uh, context values within lifecycle uh, uh, method, rather. But there are two approaches to fixing this, the first of which is to create a wrapper component. So if we were to put a component uh, within the function, the child function there where it's taking theme, we could have that pass that down as a prop to its other children, and that would result in that being updated in lifecycle events in further children. But the only problem with doing that is that that creates more boilerplate, you've got to have another wrapper for a component, and this is a bit messy. We can have uh, the property dot context onto a class, which we define our context object to, and you can also do this by doing a static context type on your class as well if your environment supports that. Yeah, yeah, so there we go. So when you do that, it allows us to access the value of your context via this dot context, which in here would be theme. So you can do that in your component did update, that kind of thing. So, yeah, so I'll go into how it works with the new React hooks. So it's pretty simple. Uh, as you can see here, you just use use context and you take the object theme in there. And then that simply passes the object, the uh, context value into theme, which is really good because you can use it in other hooks like use effect and things like that. And it's really good because whenever, whenever the context value updates, it will cause the component to uh, re-render and update. Let's be done.